Hey, what's happening everybody? Dano here again. Um, I've always enjoyed nature, being outside, taking in the beauty of planet Earth. Um, always like trees. I love you. <laughs> oh, I missed you so much. Until I got into astrophotography. <laughs> I still think trees are beautiful, but when you get into astrophotography, trees become quite the nuisance. I've got several very large oak trees surrounding my house. Uh, I have to get out all the way to the road about 60 yards from my house. So I have to carry all of my gear all the way out to the road just to get a clear view of Polaris. Uh, in the summertime when the leaves are full, I can barely see it. I used to have to set up in the actual road which is very dangerous. I don't recommend. I recently found a spot in my uncle's house next door where I've got a pretty good view of Polaris and I uh, use the ASI Air polar alignment feature over there and it worked great. Uh, it's been working where I usually image from, but I decided to try something different. I recently got an ASI Air Plus and it has the antenna on it so it has a better wi-fi signal and i've been struggling with this cold i guess from being out in the night air it's been unseasonably cold it was in the 20s and my nose starts running i start sneezing and stuff i don't know if it's allergies or a cold or what but i was like you know it would be nice if i could image from inside in my recliner and just watch this stuff once i've set it all up and that's what I did on the second night uh, I imaged this target. I was able to successfully run station mode for the first time because my ASI Air Pro would not reach inside. It, the Wi-Fi was too weak. It would always drop. But the, with the new Plus, it was excellent. Uh, image, images were loading very fast. No, uh, no connection issues. It was awesome. I think it was the last version not this most recent 2.0 version of the ASI Air, they put in an experimental feature called All Sky Polar Alignment. And I didn't want to waste a night trying it. You know, clear nights lately especially have been very rare. So I didn't want to waste a night messing with that. And if it didn't work good, I was like, so I got home on a weeknight and it was about a half a moon. I was like, oh, let's give it a shot. So I set up right outside my front door, uh, right very close to my router, and tried it out. And this video is going to be a basic walkthrough of going through the steps to try the All Sky Polar Alignment. If you have an SI Air, let's have a look. Hey, what's happening, y'all? Uh, tonight I want to try something completely new for me. I'm going to use the um, ASI Air All Sky Polar Alignment feature for the first time. I'm set up right in front of my house. I don't have a clear shot of Polaris. I can barely see it. So I may do a rough polar alignment. And then I'm going to try to do this uh, All Sky Polar Alignment for the first time. One thing I wanted to throw in here real quick is this app I used to do a rough polar alignment. It's called PS Align Pro. It's, I believe it was $2 when I bought it. I tried the free version. I downloaded it to see if it had it. It does not have this tool. Uh, it's a daytime polar alignment. There'll be some icons on the bottom. You just click the little sun icon and you'll set your phone up or your tablet on top of your saddle and then you can just uh, line up Polaris using this little tool right here and so if you can't see Polaris because of your house or trees or a building or something this is definitely a useful little tool to get you roughly aligned with Polaris so I was able to do a rough polar alignment 
Um, just can barely see Polaris through the most awful of tree branches. But I'm still going to try this all sky polar alignment and see uh, how that works. So I'm going to open up the ASI Air. I've already connected to the Wi Fi and I'm going to enter device. Everything's set up correctly. I'm going to go ahead and enter. Okay, I'm going to go to camera. I'm going to turn on anti do and cooling is set at negative 10. Gain is at 100. Okay, all that's set up right. I'm going to go through the all sky polar alignment. So you have to go into the information. This is the last time. Go to experimental feature, and I'm going to turn on all sky polar alignment. And that should allow that to work. I'm going to go into polar alignment, PA. I'm going to set the mount RA axis to northward, which I'm <clears throat> pretty much polar aligned. Uh, connect the main camera and mount and confirm the plate solve works in preview. Point scope and visible sky area except due east and due west. RA axis will rotate about 30 degrees west. Confirm the scope won't transit meridian or collide with the tripod. So now I'm going to do that. Okay, so I'm going to loosen up the declination and clutch. I'm going to just turn the scope south. Actually, I'm going to have to loosen both. I'll probably go this way. And that looks like that's about, that's about south right there. Try that. I'm going to tighten this back down. And tighten this one back down. And I'm going to take off the caps here. Now let's go through this process. I took a two second preview image to make sure that it's um, could plate solve and it did plate solve and hit the solve button. Alright. So it did solve. So now we're going to go back to the polar line. We're going to run through this. So here we go. Let's see if this works. There it goes, the rotation. And that is the best way to do it, is to go to the um, east side of the mount. Because it's going to rotate about 30 degrees. Take a picture, stop, rotate another 30 degrees. Take a third image. And let's go. So basically, going to move that um, altitude and azimuth knobs a little bit, and then hit the refresh button until we get a little smiley face up there in the right corner. Oh, I went the wrong way. Okay, I'll move it back a little bit there. Refresh. A little better. Now, I thought it was pretty spot on with my polar alignment, but we'll see how this does. I'm going to 
lock that in. I'm going to loosen the latitude adjustment knobs. And let's try to get this get this dialed in. Refresh. Wrong way. So let's turn it the other way. Hey, it looks pretty good. Turn it back a little bit. Refresh. Just down a little more. Now these are just very slight movements once you get inside this big circle here. Just a little bit more. Just a touch more. Then we're going to call that good enough. Total error is 22. So we'll just hit finish. And now let's check it out and see how it works. So one thing you'll want to do is return your mount to the home position. So just go to your telescope and go to home. And it looks like it's going to call where I started at home. Huh. Okay. That's not home. So when I went back to the home position uh, on the SIR app, it actually took it back to where I originally started facing south, which was all the way down here and then facing back south. So I don't know why it didn't take it back to this uh, home normal home position but anyways we're going to check it out and see if we can uh, get the go-to lined up and see how well this thing works so uh, Orion is pretty high up in the sky I'm just going to use the all sky to uh, take us over to the horse head and plane Okay. All right. Let's go to it. Don't you guys love my cable management? Now it's going to do a plate solve here. It's off just a little bit. Go to success. So now we're going to get the guide scope going and uh, see what kind of guiding numbers we get and see how accurate this all sky polar alignment is. So I had a message pop up on here. It said this calibration is substantially different than your last calibration. And it started off, it's all over the place. And terrible. The RA is under one. Uh, the deck is wandering pretty good. This cold air has got me sniffling again. I'm going to try to take an exposure. Okay, here's the last few seconds on a three minute test shot. All right, load them up. Here we go. Three minute test shot. Looks good. Looks pretty good. Like I said, if you dig into the corner there, you got some egg shaped stars. But I don't think that's a tracking issue because. See in the center, it's pretty round. Uh, I've just been kind of cropping those out, anyways. I've been just kind of cropping in a little bit until I can get that fixed. But yeah, this seems to be working. Uh, if this is the case, and 
I'm able to, uh, you know, get one to three minute subs right here in front of my house instead of having to go all the way out to the road. This is going to be really cool. Seems to be working. The guiding numbers aren't aren't the greatest, but that's really all I'm looking at is the stars in the center here. Yeah, they look pretty good. Look pretty good to me. Seems like it works. Coolio. So, will I be using All Sky Polar Alignment feature again? I think I will. Uh, it's nice to be able to image from inside. I said when I moved to the clear spot over next door, I'm about probably about 80 yards away from my living room where my router is. I think it's it's really cool to to just walk. 10 feet outside and set up. I actually have a better view of the eastern, southeastern sky where Orion's coming up. So my initial thoughts on the ASI Air All Sky Polar Alignment feature are, uh, it's, I mean, it's pretty good. If you don't have a guiding setup, I don't know how well that would work because I'm thinking the guiding compensates for the alignment because the first night I was able to see Polaris through the trees and I did get a rough uh, polar alignment. I, I thought it was pretty close. And when I did the all sky, I had to move it a good bit, not, you know, not very far, but a good bit away. So uh, I didn't do a test without guiding. If you have a guide system, uh, I was able to get three minute subs. Mm, I think I, I got just shy of three hours on the witch head. And, um, I changed targets. I was in the video, I was using uh, the horse head and flame nebula as a reference because I knew it would show up in one single exposure. But once I wrapped up all the uh, recording equipment, I was like, you know, I want, I'd like to try the witch head from my front yard. I, I have a Bortle five slash six front yard. Um, and I never, I think I'd tried it with filters before in town, but it's best to get out of town and get to a dark sky to get stuff like that. And I was like, well, I'm going to try it. I'm going to try the witch head and just see what I can get. Uh, I don't remember the total number of subs, but uh, it was three minutes, no filter with the red cat 51 and the ASI 2600. And it's cropped in a little bit. I had to crop some issues out. Uh, there was one, there's one area of sky, it was satellites just constantly streaming through. And I thought that the median uh, filter stack would take that out in Deep Sky Stacker, but it didn't. It left this weird streak. But I just cropped that out, and I mean, I'm pretty happy with it. It's probably my, my best witch head um, so far. And so, yeah, I'm, I'm, I like it. It's a cool feature, and maybe they'll do some more tweaks and stuff and improve it as we go along. But, yeah, it was... It's awesome. So props to all of the uh, people at ASI Air that put that feature in and, and got it in there. And uh, hopefully it'll be uh, not just an experimental feature, but it'll be a standard feature in there. And I'll definitely be using it again. Clear skies, everybody.